How do people make memories? Is it really based on the people we meet, the activities we do, or the objects we buy and sell? Well, the answer is, it depends on you. Yes, you, our fellow viewer. As everything is being explained by science, memories also have scientific basis. The word memory is defined as the active system that receives information from the senses, converts information into a usable form, organizes it as it stores it away, and then retrieves the information from storage. In fact, these are already the three processes of memory, if your memory allows you to recall what I just said, that is. The three processes of memory can be summarized as encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is a set of mental operations performed on sensory information to convert it into a usable form for the brain storage systems. Storage is a process of retaining information for a period of time. Retrieval, on the other hand, is a process of recalling and getting information out of the storage. So how can we picture this in real life situation? Suppose you were in a classroom and a teacher flashes a series of letters D, G, J, L, A for one second that you need to memorize. Of course, you are able to pronounce them accurately and in order because these are just five letters. After encoding the information from the sense of sight, you were able to store and retrieve the information because you recited the letters right. But interestingly, you'll only remember what you saw for about a second or so. This is known as sensory memory. Another type of memory is pretty much well known to everyone already. It is called short-term memory. Short-term memory lasts for about 30 seconds or more. One common method that people do to remember the number they need to dial on the phone is to constantly repeat and say what they are trying to memorize. And I'm sure you do this as well. This process of continuous selective attention or paying attention to one information only is called maintenance rehearsal. Another type of rehearsal is called elaborate rehearsal, which is a way to transfer information from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. This rehearsal is done through connecting a word with its meaning and using information already stored in the long-term memory. This new concept or information will be remembered more efficiently over time. For example, I asked you to memorize the different taxonomy classes. Instead of repeating the seven as is, you can use mnemonic to remember the letters KPCOFGS as king played chess on fine grade sand, which are words already in your long-term memory. Now you may be wondering, why can you remember some events in your life after years and some not? The answer to that question depends on what type of long-term memory you are forming. There are two types of long-term memory, the non-declarative or implicit and the declarative or explicit. The non-declarative are the skills you learn, such as walking, tying your shoes, and riding a bicycle, while the declarative can be separated further into two namely the semantic memory which is a general knowledge you learn in school such as one plus one or naming objects and the episodic memory which is your personal experience or episodes in life that are significant to you such as your birthday and your first day in school which are autobiographical in nature it is important to take note that remembering does not solely depend on you sometimes your surrounding helps you through retrieval cues which are stimuli for the Remembering. The more cues there are, the better you are in remembering something. Another principle worth taking note to is the encoding specificity principle of memory, which is the tendency of memory to be improved at certain retrieval conditions. There is a context-dependent learning which relies on your physical surroundings, say, taking an exam in the same room you learned the lessons, and the state-dependent learning which relies on the physiological or psychological state, such as listening to a happy song while memorizing something. Now that we talked about how we store information, let's move on to retrieving information. Have you ever experienced knowing something at the tip of your tongue and get frustrated that you forgot something you already know? Well, don't worry, you're absolutely normal. Because this is a common problem related to the retrieval stage of memory known as the tip of my tongue phenomenon. There are two types of retrieval processes, recall and recognition. Recall happens when there are few or no external cues. 
steps such as filling in an application. Recognition happens when the information you see or hear is being matched with the information you stored, such as word search problems. An example of a retrieval failure during recall is the tip of my tongue phenomenon. For recognition, an example is when you see someone's face and pose a question to yourself, don't I know you from somewhere? You basically remember the face, but you forgot the name. In long-term memory retrieval, memories are reconstructed or altered from the information that was stored in your memory. Other problems may arise, such as the false memory syndrome, which is the creation of inaccurate memories under hypnosis. As memory is helpful in remembering things that are valuable for you in order to survive and live happily ever after, not all people have happy endings. Problems may arise in one's memory. The opposite of remembering something is forgetting. Forgetting is actually a normal process, especially when you cram something which you'll most likely forget immediately after, according to Hermann Ebbinghaus, who was behind the forgetting curve that showed forgetting happening rapidly in the first hour, then gradually decreasing as time goes by. Another problem is known as the encoding failure. Let me ask you, which is the right logo of Pepsi, the left or the right? It's actually the left one. If you got it wrong, don't panic. You just experienced a normal encoding failure because unattended information are not encoded into memory. All right, we said that forgetting is normal, but what if it really wasn't? Digging into the neuroscience of memory, the interactions between neurons are important in memory formation as consolidation or the alterations occurring in the brain to store information into our long-term memory takes place. Such changes include the increase in the number of receptor sites strengthening of synapses or long-term potentiation, and the alterations of proteins in the brain. However, as one ages, these neurons or nerve cells start to degenerate. A possible illness that may occur is Alzheimer's disease, a type of dementia that makes you ineligible to form new declarative memories or even worse, forget your past. In short, Alzheimer's disease may involve both anterograde amnesia, the inability to form new declarative memories, and retrograde amnesia, the loss of memory that occurred before the incident due to interruptions in the consolidation process, wherein non-permanent information being stored into the long-term memory are forgotten and unretrievable. There are many famous people who served beneficial in the study of memory, such as Henry Molison, who got his hippocampus removed for his epileptic seizure that caused him anterograde amnesia, and Clive Waring, a musician who suffered severe chronic retrograde and anterograde amnesia, remembering only his wife. We recommend that you guys go check them out. Thanks for watching this video. We hope everything gets stored into your long-term memory, although I'm sure you already forgot the very first thing I said when you started this video. But it doesn't matter. Until then, this is Miko Ko. This is Skyla Cruz. This is Nicole Kong. This is Sandra Fan. This is Bea Tribiana. This is China Balagot. Wishing you a healthy memory ahead. Don't forget to regularly exercise your brain, alright? Peace!